the next up, we have uh, actress Erin Cook. I told Alec Mappa that I was asked here today to speak on diversity, and he said to me, what are you going to say after you say, kill Whitey? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a graduate of Carnegie Mellon University, an original Broadway cast member of a show that won a Tony for Dirty Puppets, and I also told famed director Moises Kaufman that he could kiss my ass almost a year ago today. Um, they well, mine, so it's real. Um, over 25,000 people read that post within about two weeks, and the resulting uproar caused the Hoya Playhouse to have a talk back on the subject, which prompted East West players to have a conference on the subject, which led to Chicago Silk Road Theatre Company also having a conference on the subject, after which I wrote about what was happening in London with the Royal Shakespeare Company's production of The Orphan of Zhao, helping out, you know, the East Asians in England, which led to a conference, and then I wrote about the brown face makeup on the Broadway revival of The Mystery of Edwin Drood, and that led to a closed door meeting, and I wasn't invited to any of them. <laughs> so I'm very grateful to be here at LA Stage Day. Thank you, Terrence McFarland. Some might say that I am blogging my way to unemployment. And I like to say, well, call me Tiger Blogger. <laughs> so what are we talking about here? <laughs> talk a bit about theatrical ethnic cleansing, because it's been a shocking year for Asians in theater, and everyone is tiptoeing around it, no matter how many conferences we have. Well, I've got time for that. So, you know, call me Hurricane Aaron. Buckle up, because I've got a little list. <laughs> Let's start at the very beginning. Not because Julie Andrews said to, and I always do what she says, but just because. So you're going to tell me now that, yes, you have all seen Caucasians playing Asian, and maybe some of you who are Caucasian have played Asian, and that it doesn't really matter, maybe, that no, there are no Asians in your production, and I like to call that neglectful racism, or in the words of a country singer, accidental racism, because you're now going to tell me, us, that you didn't know that you were being offensive, because everybody's done the Mikado that way forever. And it's just tradition. Um, <laughs> so now you're trying to convince me that because it's tradition, Tevye is going to come out and do the bottle dance. And I'm going to tell you that I was born in New York and forget about it. <laughs> Look, I know that yellow face is fun. <laughs> I totally get it. Because Asian people have great hair, and we have gorgeous eyes, and kimonos are comfortable, and who doesn't love their way around some noodles? They're delish. <laughs> I get it. We are totally blessed. Our women are gorgeous, and our men can kill you wearing a cloth belt just with their bare hands. <laughs> we are a sexy bunch. But that is no reason to culturally skin us and wear us like a coat. <laughs> or let me put it another way. Eyeliner is not s supposed to extend all the way to your ear. <laughs> I know, it's funny because it's true. Right? The show just writes itself. Or, uh, I guess white people wrote that show, so... Yeah, there we go. Anyway. No matter how much makeup you put on, no matter what kind of chunk song you choose to wear, it's not going to work. Okay, you guys are still not going to wake up and be Tamlin Tamita. And I get that you're frustrated by this. I mean, I would like to be 5'10 and have Scarlett O'Hara's prepartum waistline, and that's not going to happen either, and we all have to be okay with that. Maybe I'm being too polite. Damn those jeans. Okay. <laughs> white people. And by white people, I include myself, because I am, just like serial killers, most movie stars, and Sarah Palin. You're now officially on notice that yellow face or brown face is off the table. It's wrong. It's offensive. It's culturally irresponsible. 
and you look like idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Tiger blogger. <laughs> so now that we've taken yellow face off the table permanently, we're all agreed, how do we change? Where does the theater begin? Well, theater begins with casting, right? So this is where the excuses begin. This is where you tell us you would love to cast more Asians, but there are just none of us available, which is why the Emperor of China was played by a blonde and <coughs> blue-eyed blonde. All right, La Jolla is the nightingale, set in mythical China. And out of a cast of 12, the leads were all Caucasian, in Asian dress, Asian makeup, Asian names. And that little girl, who is Asian, was counted as a viable cast member. That was the representation of Asians in the Nightingale, set in mythical China. And that happened on our watch here in California. So according to Equity, there are 763 members identifying themselves as Asian American as of 2012. There are only 3% of Broadway roles available going to Asian Americans, according to a study by APAC. So someone was available. <laughs> there was someone available. Unless every regional theater in the country simultaneously decided to do Miss Saigon, King and I, Bombay Dreams, South Pacific, and Flower Drum Song all at once in a mass extravaganza entitled Praise to Buddha that Oscar Yellow Fever Cherry Blossom Festival. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't find us, you're not looking. 763 equity members identifying as Asian American. Oh, see what I did there? I brought in the map. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that 3% of the Broadway rolls goes down to 2% when you go to nonprofit world. But you know, that's New York. And this is L.A., and in L.A. we never even had a study about Asian Americans in theater because nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares. Why don't you care? It's a blot on the great theater city that Los Angeles is. Why are you not utilizing us? And you can't say training. Years ago, people used to say, well, there's nobody available because we don't have the training. But right now, we have grads from Juilliard, Yale, Carnegie Mellon, NYU, etc., etc., etc. So you can't say training. You could say it's because you don't even think about it. It's neglect. You're choosing not to think about it. But we live in Los Angeles. And as previous panelists have pointed out, Los Angeles is a pretty diverse city. Don't be lazy. You know who lives in LA? So some of you say, oh, well, yeah, they're great Asian American performers, but they're all on Broadway. You know who lives in LA? Stand up, Deborah Craig. <laughs> Deborah S. Craig is here, Drama Desk winner for creating the part in 25th Annual Putnam County <laughs> And she lives and chooses to live in Los Angeles. What if your play or musical is set somewhere in America, but you don't choose to have Asian people in it, and you don't call for them in the breakdowns, even, and even if they come in, you don't cast them, because simply, you know, if I have Asians in it, people won't understand, because they weren't in the country at that time. Just because there's not a Tong, or a Triad, or a brothel in Chinatown reference in your play, does not mean we don't fit in America. Folks, you don't have to keep trying to explain our presence, because we've been here since the 1800s. <laughs> okay? We didn't land on Plymouth Rock, but Gold Mountain has surely slammed down on us. <laughs> oh, see what I did there? A Chinese person threw dynamite, you know what you get? A transcontinental <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so here I am and I'm blathering on about diversity and you're all like, blah, 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 when do we get to drink? <laughs> what does it mean? What does diversity mean? Well, after the big blow-up for the Nightingale, La Jolla Playhouse cast its next big show, Glengarry Glen Ross, with a multi-ethnic, multi-aged cast. And that dirty talking real estate office looked like any and every real estate office in this country today. At the same time, the Old Globe chose to do the new Asian American musical Allegiance, and it broke box office records. Both shows were nominated in several categories for the San Diego Critics Circle Awards, and the individuals nominated 
for their performances included the names Manu Narayan, Leia Salonga, Michael K. Lee, Stafford Arima. Currently, the disco musical about Imelda Marcos, Here Lies Love, is selling out at the New York Public Theater and has been extended and has picked up several drama desk nominations. And I think you get my point. Diversity is awards. And not just awards, but they're dollars that make you holla, honey boo boo chow. <laughs> <laughs> you better red neck it now. <laughs> okay, here's a thought. You know what? Put in the breakdowns that you're looking for Asian Americans. You, you don't have to hire us, but invite us to the party because do the outreach. We have been so long pushed aside that we don't believe you when you say multicultural. We think multicultural is a cop out because it has been. And let's talk about the art for just a, a second. Because why do people go to theater? Yeah, they go to beyond, beyond being entertained. They go to see themselves. They go to see themselves suffer, choose foolish love, and sing ballads, but what they're connecting to is reflections of themselves. And that's the power of theater, because theater is affirmation. So let me ask you, why would Asian Americans which have the highest disposable income of any group in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> Why would they go to theater if they cannot go to a play set in China or Japan and see Asian Americans on stage? As theater artists, we need those people in the building. We need butts in seats. If people see themselves, they'll buy a ticket. And believe me, if you tell an Asian American that they have a relative in a play, they'll buy all of them. <laughs> and they'll have an uncle that will cater opening for free. <laughs> Trust. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. Everybody has a restaurant somewhere. <laughs> Year, which was exclusion from plays and musicals where the shows were set in China. And I'm speaking now directly about the Royal Playhouse, the Royal Shakespeare Company, the Roundabout, anyone who's ever staged the Mikado, except for Eric Idle, because his was kind of amazing. Um, here's the thing about China. There are Chinese people in it. <laughs> and Japan. Japan has people. People who need people. People who need Japanese people. You know, same goes for Thailand, Korea, India, Sri Lanka. If you can go to a map, and please, when you see where your play is set, please go to a map. If you can go to a map and see where your show is set, you should know enough not to erase our faces from our history. Because we can help. You cannot erase us because you didn't like that in your last workshop, your Asian American cast told you that a song about a geisha in a place set in China was inaccurate. <laughs> you cannot grab all the beautiful costumes and colors and fabrics of India and leave out South Asians who can tell you that the colors you pick for the saris are those of mourning. And you definitely cannot go to China, grab their oldest play, their best loved work, their Hamlet, Keep it. the Chinese names, costumes, and then cast everyone except British East Asians because you say in a repertory season of classic plays, no one would buy into their faces in a Brecht piece. When you do that, not only do you lose all artistic integrity, but everyone who leaves your show is turned into Foghorn Leghorn. What? The, what, 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 what is that? <laughs> <laughs> diversity, the rallying cry of diversity, is supposed to make us all smarter. It's supposed to make us look at our world and see each other. It's not a stick to beat us with when you would rather see Caucasian faces in an Asian story. And to have it done out of neglect, out of indifference by several members of a community who we have stood alongside in their fight for recognition, for marriage equality, for health care, that was not just a slap in the face. That was a Jones, Collins, Linda Evan tumble into the fish pond bitch slap. <laughs> and grab me some shoulder pads, because I was pissed. Because you know what? This is the theater. And we don't do that to each other. There are positive things happening for Asian Americans in theater. ACT in San Francisco is staging the Orphan of Zhao. 
they just finished staging another original production with an Asian American creative team and cast, Stuck Elevator. New workshops are going forward for Allegiance and heading east. But you don't want all the other folks to get the awards, right? Because what are you going to do? I asked my API, in closing, I asked my API friends who are actors what were their best and worst moments being an actor. And the best always, hands down, being on stage, doing what they loved, doing it better. <sighs> better than anybody else. And their worst moments. Their worst moments were when somebody came up and told them how to be Asian. Or how to be submissive. Or how to not be bold or how to change their base color so they didn't appear so yellow. None of these comments ever came from another Asian American because an Asian American is a person and you don't tell people how to be more like people, do you? One of my best friends who's gone now, um, his name is Anderson Jones and he used to say to me, he's African American, and we would have these conversations all the time, conversations about invisibility and non-representation, and he would say, if they knew better, they would do better. And so my wish for Los Angeles theater is now that you know, I challenge you to do better. Thank you, thank you for having me.